Right, hello again. So, uh, Hagar Hatchard again with Boost 307. So, here we go with vlog number three, so third in the series so far. Um, the timing of uh, this particular vlog ties in very well with Brexit. So, a lot of our guys, both in small businesses and the property world and just the general UK economy, the timing of probably doing this is going to be quite interesting. So we'll be doing this vlog now in terms of the information that, that I've got. It's kind of general information. And then we'll see uh, on the 31st of January, maybe on a possible vlog or a couple of weeks time, some of the media items that are coming out. So I thought it'd be quite timely to, to talk about this. So obviously we've had uh, the general election for Christmas, uh, safe to say. So I'm, I'm going to take a, a position here as a business owner in terms of being fairly black and white, so not taking a political stance, whether uh, we, we uh, agree with being a Remain or an exit here, clearly Brexit is happening. And I think uh, with the general election, I think, it's, I think the key word there, as you can see from the smiley, is the certainty. So that's given us some certainty in there. Withdrawal bill with Brexit has been signed off. And also we've got the Royal Assent and the timing of this particular vlog today is down that the EU have uh, signed off on their side as well. So over Christmas, obviously a lot of people have been working both on the political side and our own businesses uh, to get ahead of the learning curve. So with all those things in place there, as I said, the key word here is uh, certainty and that's exactly what business need. People can be able to plan. Um, just on a personal note here, I've been sort of around the UK quite a bit over Christmas and the early part of January and there is a little bit of confidence coming in. A lot of media items, remember with media, it's all about the headlines. If you get into sort of probably the heavyweight commentators here, um, certainly there is certainty coming in and it seems that deadlines are being met. Um, certainly in the property industry, certainly on finance and banking, it's been long overdue. So yeah, that, that optimism sneaking in there. On the UK effects then, so uh, obviously various industries, there's been a lot of lobbying. So if it's the fishing industry, uh, the construction industry, society of motor manufacturers and traders, um, if it's the finance industry, uh, the store traders, small businesses, offices, manufacturers, um, at the moment, there's quite a lot of information going on in terms of industries taking a position and this ability to be able to plan. Um, on the uh, Royal Institute Charter Surveyors and Property Valuations, it is safe to say that that industry has definitely been impacted and we've had a reduction on the loan to values and some of the valuations are coming in very, very uh, let's say, fa fairly pessimistically. Uh, we're hoping that is quite short term and we're seeing that at first hand. Um, I've seen anecdotally some of the RICS professional indemnity going up to between 48 and 400 percent. That tells you about the risk uh, analysis that's being done by the insurance companies and it is affecting the industry. As I said, it'll be interesting in three months, six months, 12 months. And this certainly happened after the, uh, the last recession where we, where we sit with that. Um, 400% there is a large figure. Obviously currency exchange, obviously this is being uh, sent over both to um, our UK brethren as well as our overseas uh, investors in various businesses, not just property. So with the currency exchange rates there, it is still advantageous, both pe people and individuals and businesses coming into the UK either to buy property or buy businesses. And there is a lot of, a lot of purchasing going on at the moment because of the exchange rate advantage. Um, our FX specialists, as it were, are still expecting it might sort of, you know, adjust a little bit, but it will still be in the benefit of the um, of people coming into the UK. A uh, lot in the media about the China growth rate at 6%, it's all slowing down. Uh, just remember there that is still 300% greater than uh, the USA and they're stronger than the UK. So the media again can have a headline on there if you actually get into the metrics. I'm going to go into some of the export partner percentages in a minute. It's going to be very interesting about what the general media is doing in the headlines and actually what is really going on for real. Um, just a comment there about Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs in terms of patients with companies in terms of VAT payments and uh, incorporation tax rate there, a lot of patients which is not being presented, certainly in councils, in terms of business rates and council tax. There is a lot of media and there's certainly a lot of lobbying at the moment. 
Certainly uh, things like, again, it's observing what's really going on in the country in terms of hospital parking. That's obviously a political hot potato if you do want to bring politics in. And at the moment, there has been some fairly large regeneration projects. I think it's safe to say over the last one, two, three years of Brexit, if you bring the word investment and infrastructure in, they, they've been fairly bad words. Um, you can see on HS2, there's an awful lot of lobbying going on in terms of the cost of the project and then the future for HS3. But overall, city regeneration, Belfast just announced a £500 million regeneration project here. And I think at the region level, we're going to see a lot more of that. And if they can, t this is a businessman speaking now, if we can see a sensible piece in terms of car park rates and business rates, this will be a key piece. They're already talking about digital sales tax and the bun fight between America and the UK on that. And this is just the new landscape, you know, and this is where our town centres will start to regenerate. And I feel certainly the Metro Mails, we talked about that on vlog two here, will start to come in. And I can see there is going to be a change of emphasis. There has to be. We're in the residential property space, we're in the commercial property space, we're in the business uh, space. All of these things can come good. So interesting where councils are placing themselves and whether local government can um, be more amenable, start to heal, start to work as a team, start to bring our communities back, bring our communities back, our business. If, uh, if the, the tech giants and the taxation there is part of that process, then I think uh, both individuals, families, businesses, uh, property, business owners will, will, uh, will want to sign up to that process. That's all good. Just in terms of factual content here, again, there's quite a lot of misinformation going on. Um, not a net exporter myself, but I have a lot of clients who are in that space here. Look at our export partners and look at, say, the trade missions going on. Mass I'm a personal massive fan of the Royal Family and what they're doing in terms of uh, the hearts and minds overseas, Commonwealth visits, etc. Um, you can see here that uh, these in figures are interesting. Yeah, trading partner, USA, 13%. Germany, 10%. You can read the figures. Netherlands, 7%. France, 6%. And you can see before the general election, a lot of the gerrymandering and the visits that were being done by political fi officials. Not being polit political here, but in terms of real business, the meetings that were going on. These are the main trading partners. France, 6%. Uh, Republic of Ireland, China, both at 6%. Okay, people go on a lot about the press about Chinese growth, 6%, so there's 94% of UK exports that's not China, okay, common sense coming in there. Uh, we've got uh, Switzerland, 5%, Belgium, 4%. So if you take these elements here, that is 60% over two, four, six, eight partners, okay, media's running away on something, these are real, these are the actual figures. Okay, trade agreements for the future uh, in view of the Commonwealth. If we come here, we've got another 10%, so 3% uh, respectively with Italy, Spain and Turkey, Hong Kong running at 2%. Um, I do know that some money is flowing out of Hong Kong with some of the, uh, uh, the riots that have been going on, which has been going on for some time. So just to conclude on here with Brexit, so we've kind of done, this, there's a lot more certainty coming in and we're about just less than a week to go before the sign off. Effects in the UK, we've looked at property, we've looked at the various industries, growth rates, and you know, what's being reported in the headlines of the media. Remember a headline on the page of the media, go and look at an article number 147 on say BBC Newsfeed, CNN Europe, Bloomberg, uh, Financial Times, City AM, although that's a, a more of a London-centric publication, um, lots of articles, you know, real business below. And when you look at the export percentage here, this is going to be very interesting in terms of globalisation, on, online presence and the disruptive technologies. And I just thought this would be a really good time to, uh, to, to present this Brexit piece a week before. Let it all settle out and we're going to come back and we'll do another presentation, both in small businesses, that's our space, SMEs, uh, property uh, businesses, mom and pop business, the small end, maybe employees of one to 25 and see how it's played out and see if this certainty and this optimism plays out and we can report that back to you and help your own businesses. Remember Boost 307, the little sales pitch at the end, the subscription, the comments below is we want to help, we want to add value, give you that information 
and that might be something where you can tip into sort of our business mentorships and property mentorships as well as our individual courses. Uh, on there, our social media feed is nearly complete. We've got our logo up and running. This is going to be vlog four. We're going to be doing uh, vlog three, sorry, we're going to be doing vlog four fairly shortly and look forward, really look forward to seeing you next time. Many thanks for your help.